Welcome back. If you're new, welcome in the first place. Quick one today, don't need to go into too much depth, and I'll tell you why. Um, but we're going to be looking at the latest releases from, well, Plumeria, um, but it's in partnership with Film Stories. So this is the, Plumeria have released a whole host of films now, but with Film Stories in tandem, this is their second and third releases, the previous one being Sneakers with, uh, oh, everybody was in Sneakers, weren't they? Robert Redford, Sidney Poitier, River Phoenix, Dan Aykroyd, um, I think I was in it. Um, but these two, the Kevin Costner duo, um, give us two and three, if you will. So let's have a look. So first of all, from 1987, No Way Out, right? They always come in these lovely cases, which gives you a little bit of iconography, which I, th I think that's just a bit class. Just something to sum up the film, but not give too much away. Um, and then when you open it up, you get... Huh. And I always thought this cover doesn't do the film justice. It looks like it could be just a general romantic thing, but then Gene Hackman's in the background, so it gives it maybe a little bit of menace, but it doesn't sell it on what it really could be. This is a remake of the 1940s film uh, The Big Clock um, with Charles Lawton, which is out from Arrow on Blurry, um, brown film. But it's such a different version that the director, Roger Donaldson, didn't even know he was doing a remake until it was pointed out to him by Mel Gibson, of all people. Um, so it's not a straight remake. It takes elements for the big clock. It takes the fundamentals of the big clock. But it transfers media to military. It transfers location. It transfers New York to, to, to DC. And it's got a very different opening and ending. So just because you know the big clock, if you don't know No Way Out, then don't think you do it. Um, it's one of those films, though, if you, if you miss the first five minutes and miss the last five... Your ghost, because they kind of make it, and that's true in most films, obviously, isn't it? That you you need to see the very beginning and the very end. But come on, there's a lot of films you can catch up if you if you miss the start, and if you miss the end, you, you know what it's going. You need to see every frame of No Way Out. So it's a brilliant film. It's never been released in the UK on Blu-ray. Unbelievably, never been released here. I can't believe either of these have never been released in the UK. Stunning performance from uh, Gene Hackman, Sean Young, her wonderfully offbeat self, um, complete with her erratic additions, um, and Gene Hackman giving it that. Hmm, I kind of don't want to go into spoilers. Just brilliant neo noir from 1987. And Orion Pictures, who released this, the great Orion Pictures bet that if they held back on, if they didn't release it straight away, Paramount's then upcoming film, The Untouchables, would push Kevin Costner's career so high that this, if they released it just a few months later, would do a lot better than it actually would if they released it when they were going to. That worked rather well. The Untouchables was a massive hit and this rode its, to its coattails. Um, phenomenally, and uh, became that string of Kevin Costner movies from, from the late 80s into the early 90s, where it was just everything he did was just, you know, talk of the town, absolute everything. It's, I don't think you can really describe to people now that Ke how big Kevin Costner was for a while, before, you know, the Postman and Waterworld and whatnot made him a, don't want to say a laughing stock, because he's still a great character actor, but... Um, and um, Roger Donaldson would keep using Kevin a couple of times, um, 13 days, the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. This edition here comes with an audio commentary but with Roger Donaldson, which is good, but it's the old one from the DVD from way back in 1998. 25-year-old commentary, isn't that amazing? But you get a new interview with him as well. So it's not that like you're just getting the, the old commentary, so you get a brand new interview with him, which... Uh, Quite different. It goes into a few more, a few things that have changed since then. Just some insight that he couldn't have given just, Christ, eleven years after the film came out, he did the commentary, and now it's been thirty-six years. Bloody hell! Um, you get Film Stories podcast with Simon Brew. Um, film Stories being the company that put this out. So Film Stories, if you don't know, are a magazine 
There's also a podcast and now a distribution label, along with Plumeria. And subtitles, of course, for the for the hard of hearing. Um, it's a great disc. It's not going to be top of the year for reference quality of picture. It's an older master, um, but the commentary is great. It's just, it, do you know what it is? It's, it's, oh, thank God, finally, I can put that on the shelf, and I've finally got a classic from, from this period that I've been meaning to get the import of, or blah, blah, blah. Finally, I've got this version. So, yeah, and I, I love that iconography. Love that. Speaking of which, um, baseball and uh, ooh, some frillies. So the the success of this leads to this. Orion, very happy with the performance of Kevin Costner, um, cast him as a character here. So he's not playing Bill Durham. Uh, they are the Durham Bills, the team that he's playing for. This is a sports film. But if you're someone like me who comes from a place where we don't know what baseball is, it's a bit like cricket, isn't it? Um, then don't worry, because it's also a great romantic comedy, but most importantly, it's just a great comedy. It, it, you don't need to be... It's not Notting Hill, you know? You don't need to be in that kind of frame of mind. It's a great comedy in its own right. Again, has some, some fun iconography there. Um, this film, directed by Ron Shelton, who would go on to direct every sports movie that you've seen. Every single one, from White Men Can't Jump to, again, someone who reused Kevin Costner, Tin Cup. Um, did, did he do it for the love of the game? I mean, he's done just a million sports movies. He was a, a pro ball player, or I guess minor league or something, until his mid-twenties and then got involved in the film industry. So he's someone who adores baseball, as is Kevin Costner, and it really shows in this. There's an attention to detail that you can tell, even as a novice. Um, Kevin Costner practiced and practiced and practiced to make it... He, he's been brought in as, a, as an old head to teach this new young kid how to, how to throw. Uh, played by Tim Robbins. And um, he's the veteran, um, Kevin Costner. And to make sure that he had everything right, he took months and months of practice and he watched old clips and blah, blah, blah. He really went method into baseball, which I don't think that was too much of a stretch for Kevin Costner because both him and Ron Shelton just love the game so much for the love of the game that, um, you know, perfectly happy to do so. So this has got a couple of old commentaries as well. It's got an audio commentary with Ron Shelton. It's got one with Kevin Costner and Tim Robbins. Um, that's from 2002, I think. Um, which is fun. That's a more upbeat commentary where they, they have more, more of a laugh with it. It's a pity Susan Sarandon's not involved. Um, because she's in here. And we'll go into that in a second. Film Stories podcast with Simon Brew again. And English subtitles. This is one of the best scripts of the 1980s in Hollywood for my, for my money. It's a really witty script. It's a really funny script. Um, and again, you don't need knowledge of baseball. It, everything you need to know about the, the game, it tells you in the film. So, highly recommended. Susan Sarandon's character, again, if you just saw that cover, you might just think, oh, it's just let the no way out cover, it's just a romantic thing, is it? No, she's this um, kind of bizarre character who every season, this team, every every season, the uh, the Durham Bulls um, have, she gives her heart and soul and falls in love with one player a season. Um, and hmm, who's it going to be this year? Well, there's a kind of triangle here, but again, it doesn't go into schmaltzy territory and it doesn't go into four weddings and a funeral territory. It's very fun, very upbeat. Um, and it's 18 rated as well, which I was quite surprised, quite surprised to think that's still 18. I don't think it would be if the BBFC looked at it again, but hey, 18 rated. The Film Studies podcasts that are included on these um, with Simon Brew are fantastic. Um, absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, the, the audio commentaries by the filmmakers and actors, you want to hear those. But Simon's podcast condense so much that honestly, if I if I tell you any facts, any I mean even the thing about Mel Gibson that I mentioned about No Way Out that came from Simon. Um, so it's about 
I don't know, an hour and 15 in total between the two films, but you pick up so much. It's almost like film school for these two films. He just throws tidbits, facts, figures, miscellany, um, essentially all the trivia you could want about these, the making of, and the pre-production and post-production, and how Orion facilitated it, and um, that's where I picked up that Orion decided to hold off on releasing no way out and, and see if they could kind of ride on the the wave of uh, of the untouchables so yeah um just another two home runs is that a thing in baseball i think it is isn't it another two home runs for plumeria um so again they don't have the budget of of arrow or eureka so they're not going to be releasing five films a month and they're not going to be commissioning loads of new extras and things but it's heartfelt it's releasing films that we don't have editions of in the uk um and to be honest this is one of the great double hitters is that a thing it sounds like it could be a thing uh in baseball no Oh, double back, going to back, back twice, back, I don't know. Anyway, figure something out. Southpaw's boxing. Anyway, anyway, it's it's one of the best one-two punches. We'll go for uh, a more boxing metaphor there. Um, and, and Hollywood of the 1980s in terms of Kevin Costner, just bang, bang. Uh, and then you throw the untouchables in, you throw dances with wolves in, you throw field of dreams in, and it's just a GFK, you know, blah 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 blah. Kevin Carson just wrote Robin Hood. Hmm. Sorry, Kevin. It's, it's mostly not your fault. I don't think your accent's as atrocious as some people. I I think Brian Adams ruined it for everybody personally with that bloody song. You know it's true. Every, that was number one for four months. Who doesn't buy a... If, if you like that song and it's been out for three and a half months, why haven't you bought it yet? Baffling. Anyway, links below. Um, pick these up if you don't already have them. Great editions of two 80s classics. One brilliant neo-noir with a real great twist... Fantastic twists, brilliant cast. Um, in fact, both of these get brilliant cast um, with a very different kind of femme fatal ish character um, in each, um, and a very different kind of old crusty character in each as well. Yeah. Um, so it's almost yeah variations in the theme. Wonderful performances by Costner and both. Uh, Bill Durham's easily the funniest thing that he's ever done, um, and. Yeah, no way out. It's just a classic of its of its genre. So, highly recommended. And when you start to get the plumeria stuff and they start to stack up in the shelf, they look rather nice too. So, yeah, folks, I'll see you very soon. Until next time, arrivederci. <laughs>